Today I'm talking with Lynn Howes, who is an LPN and a chaplain here at Community Hospice. Lynn, thank you so much for talking with me today. I know a lot of people have questions about what hospice actually is. You know, I think we have kind of a fuzzy idea on our head, and I was just hoping you could clear things up for us. What, what is hospice? Okay, Andy. Uh, well, thanks for giving me this opportunity. Uh, hospice is what we consider comfort care for a person who is diagnosed um, by several doctors that they are, if their disease takes its normal course of action, they will possibly live either six months or less. So it's comfort care. We don't do any uh, heroic measures to prolong their life, but we don't do any measures to increase or decrease the amount of life that they're going to live. Could you give me an example of what is meant by a heroic measure? Uh, we would be talking about um, uh, physical therapies, uh, strengthening um, more towards IVs or chemotherapy uh, or operations. Okay. A person can choose to do those um, if they do, but it would not be covered under hospice care. So a lot of times we have people that come into hospice and then change their mind. We have people that also come into hospice and actually get better and graduate. Wow, that's a great thing. Yeah, so, um, but the hospice <coughs> care is more comfort care to keep the patient comfortable and also to meet the needs of those who are caring for their loved ones. So if somebody is suffering with cancer, would they continue with chemotherapy or just, you know, relief from pain? Yeah. We don't, on, in extreme cases, we do chemotherapy, but most likely it is more just for comfort care. Uh, they do, we do have people who have radiation treatments while on hospice but mostly by medications we keep them comfortable. Okay. You know, this is the first time I've ever been actually in a hospice building. And I, I was really surprised when I came in that it's, it's a, a very pleasant, peaceful place. Um, it doesn't seem very overwhelmingly depressing or anything, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is kind of what I would have expected. You know, if people know that, um, you know, they're terminal and basically I mean is it correct for me to say a lot of people are coming here to die is that that is part of the reason why we have this facility okay but the facility here is for not only for the end of life but also for periods when uh, the patient becomes there's an out-of-control situation okay where the pain's not controlled or there's anxiety with the patient and we cannot control it either in their home or at a facility, then we bring them here to, okay. to do more uh, specific care for the patient. And we also provide respite stays for t periods of time when the patient and the caregiver specifically is needing to take some a break from being the caregiver and so the patient would come here and the caregiver would get a break although they can still come but we would provide that for the patient and the family okay so people could receive hospice care both here and at a facility and at their own home is That's that correct right? Yes, we serve people in their own home. Most of the people that we serve are in their own home, but there is people who are at facilities and nursing homes that we serve, as well as people would come here. So what exactly services does hospice provide? We provide a numerous amount of services that are covered under the Medicare benefit. They're, 
if you have Medicare, there is Medicare provides for a hospice benefit. Our particular hospice accepts that as full payment. There's no additional costs for our hospice. And we provide a nurse. You have a primary care nurse who would be assigned to each patient. We also have a medical doctors, uh, several medical doctors uh, that are specific uh, and trained for hospice and palliative care. Some hospices do not, they have doctors, but they're not certified. Ours are all certified for hospice care and palliative care. And so they know and have the understanding uh, of the care that w was provided under the hospice benefit through Medicare. That probably makes a real difference to the patients, having a doctor that is um, well versed in this stage of life. I would imagine. It does. We also have that doctor also makes house calls. So it's very comforting to the patient and the caregiver mm -hmm. that they no longer have to go to a, uh, their primary care doctor for, day, for visits to see the doctor. They, we, the primary care nurse, will contact either their primary physician or our medical directors to get orders and to make sure that the patient is comfortable and does not have any anxiety or agitation. So basically the service that you're providing is that they see a physician and the nurses are able to provide the pain medication that they need, is that pretty much? That's correct. That's what it... But we also provide art therapy, music therapy, mm -hmm. massage therapy. Okay. Um, all those things are provided under our benefit without any additional cost to the patient or the caregiver. Okay, so you had mentioned a couple minutes ago that, you know, like physical therapy would not be normally a part of this because, probably because physical therapy is geared towards getting better. That's your correct. your music therapy and art therapy and massage therapy, those would be more of a of a comfort type thing. Is that right? That's correct. What we try to do is to cover not only the physical part of a person, but their spiritual part and also their uh, medical uh, issues that the patient would have. So we try to do a holistic care mm -hmm. for the patient, and and also. We have social workers that are assigned to each patient as well as to the caregivers. So they not only support our patients, but they support the families in this time uh, going through hospice and, and the changes that a family uh, experiences in this time of their life. That seems like such a wonderful thing because for a lot of people, this is uncharted territory. You know, if, if a family has never gone through the death of a loved one before, it must be so overwhelming. Right. And, and to have people who deal with that on a daily basis to be able to come alongside and say, here's what you can expect, um, here's, you know, here's some options how to deal with it, I, I imagine that's a, a great comfort to the whole family. It is. Uh, that I say that we are a bridge and we are a bridge, we help the patient and the family cross over the bridge. And so we provide that bridge, that support to help them to do that. That's wonderful. So you had mentioned um, earlier needing a doctor's recommendation that the person is, you know, I forget exactly how you said it, you know, not really going to recover. Mm -hmm. is, is that how a person enters the hospice program? Yeah, to enter the hospice program, you would need two signature, two physicians that would sign uh, an agreement saying that the person has a disease or a progress or um, I don't know what else you would call it. a disease that if it took the normal course of action, the person 
has six months or less to live. Okay, so six months is the, the threshold. Is the threshold. Now, what we do is we evaluate that patient um, 90 days after they enter the program, then another 90 days, and then 60 days, every 60 days they're reevaluated. So someone has to show a steady decline in and to keep them in hospice. That's why I said earlier, if someone gets better, and we do have people that get better, then they no longer would qualify for the hospice benefit, they would graduate. But we evaluate them at certain points in time to continue to say they are, they're showing a steady decline and they meet the hospice benefit under Medicare. Okay. Now if somebody is younger, you know, then, and is not on Medicare, does insurance generally cover the cost of hospice? Generally, insurance does cover. One of the things about particularly our hospice is we have a what we call an indigent fund for those who cannot pay at all, that do not have insurance or Medicare. We do not turn anyone away for to provide our services. Uh, we provided services from an age range of two months mm -hmm. up to people over a hundred years old. Wow. Is there anything else that I forgot to, to ask? Anything you'd like to share with our re listeners? We uh, are locally based um, since 1986 and the board that we have is comprised of citizens within the community and that's our board that runs our specific organization. And I, I think I failed to mention at the beginning, this is Community Hospice located in New Philly. That's correct. And we serve, our main three counties we serve is Stark County, Carroll County, and Tuscarawas County, but we also cover some of the other counties, uh, the edges of some of the other counties in the area. Um, we have the only hospice house, the place that we're doing the interview here, uh, a place where someone can stay because not every hospice has a hospice house okay. where people can come and we have the only one in the lower Stark County, uh, Carroll County or Tuscarawas County area and um, let's see. we also have over 400 volunteers so most of our staff is actually volunteers and so they do a lot of things um, they actually come and sit with people um, to give the caregivers a break so mm -hmm. that the patient has someone there with them while the caregiver maybe goes out and get groceries okay. uh, or goes to church those types of things um, they also deliver supplies to the people's homes whenever they might need supplies that they don't have. Uh, so we have a great uh, group of volunteers. They also have fundraisers for us that are put into the fund for those who do not have money to pay for hospice. So there's some services like the massage therapy, the art therapy, and music therapy are not covered under um, Medicare, mm -hmm. but we still provide those services and the funds for those are raised through our volunteers. Wow, that's great. Sounds like a great program here. Um, if somebody is not in this area, how would somebody, I mean, can you find hospice in the Yellow Pages? You can look up hospice in the Yellow Pages or online you can find hospice. There's multiple hospice communities uh, that serve throughout the United States and in different communities. So there is different types of hospices and so you would need to make sure you do your homework when you're picking a hospice, I would say. Is there any kind of an accreditation or certification, do you know? There is and that's why I said earlier that our, specifically our medical directors are certified for mm -hmm. hospice and palliative care. Okay. And there is um, 
Medicare has the requirements. If you provide hospice care, you have to meet certain okay. qualifications. So that would be something people could check out. You That's know, if they correct. find a different one. Okay. All right. Well, um, thank you, Lynn. That was very informative. And I will be sure to put information up on the Facebook page and on my website as well, uh, how you can get in touch with hospice here, community hospice in New Philadelphia, Ohio.